No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Podcast. Keeping it raw. Keeping it real. 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 So Killing Kittens, you know, it's been, you know, 15 years in the making, you know, in terms of a business, it's been very successful to say the least. And the company is valued at about 15 million right now with 60% of revenue coming from the online events and the sex education workshops. You and know. the membership. So the, uh, the online side, the, most of the revenue is because it's like an online... Um, the way like dating sites work, those subscriptions exactly. So right. actually, most of the online revenue um, is all is all subscriptions. Right, right. Wow, that, that's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, it's ever growing, you know. And like I said, 15, 15 years ago, you started this thing. Did you ever imagine it to be this big? I had it in my yeah. I always think big. It's like okay. go yeah, think big or go home. And um, um, when I launched it, I had that yeah the unicorn business in my head of right. how how it could be a billion dollar business that's um, crazy and i saw it very easily as getting there um mm. i knew it'd be a long a long process yeah um that you know if it took 40 years to get there so be it um yeah. because it meant changing society's perception of women and sex sure um sure. No, that, that, that um, is that yeah. is really interesting, you know, because from a business perspective to to actually start something off and to envision it being this big, you know, it says a lot about your mindset, you know. So can you describe your mindset? Like, what is your why? What is your why? Why do you do what you do? What made you even kick this thing off? I mean, we know, like you said earlier, it's from the perspective of empowering women, but why? What was your why? Um, do you know what? My why has always been why. Mm. That's the thing. It, it Ever since I was little and um, mom says I've, infuriated her and I still infuriate her because I question everything right, right. and there's always that well why and you know most people you go well that's how it is I mean you look at what's happening with lockdowns and everything now it's sort of you know everyone's sort of lemmings they believe what they hear on the news sure. they don't want to question it you know so we're going to stay at home mm. and there's no why mm. <laughs> asked mm. and um, whereas my brain it automatically goes into well why mm. like, I want to look at the data I want to look at facts i want to look at actually what's happening i want to you know read up on stuff and sure. um and question and question and um and yeah and so i've always that's just i think why actually mm. is, your <laughs> is why. probably is, is probably my why yeah and, um, a huge advocate and that, yeah. you know with kk it was like well why aren't women allowed the same you know when it comes to sex why mm. are we treated differently why is there so much such shaming why should we be any different mm. um when it comes to our needs sexually um and without judgment um mm. so um why can't i do this and so when i you know when i launched and a lot of people were like you shouldn't be you know and i said i'm going to be doing it and people were like you can't do that but cd it's disgusting and i'll be like well why yeah. <laughs> why can't i do it watch me yeah. Yeah. um so it's kind of i think actually you know you hit it in one word that's mm. my why. why is my why, the why, the why. <laughs> um, question, question and always has it always has been since i was little yeah no that's that's great i mean like i'm a huge advocate of questioning everything you know don't just sit around and just be you know i, I guess a zombie or a sheep you know just why why and why not you know so a huge advocate of that you mentioned something um a second ago about you always knew kk would be this big it was it was in your vision from the start can we talk a little bit about that you know um your your outlook and your perspective when it comes to actually your know, action in things you know how do you go about starting something off what's your mindset i am um, i think that's the thing as always i well i did i did sports science as a d degree um and a big part of that is, is psychology and sports psychology and you know athletes but you visualize the goals you visualize winning you visualize the end the bigger picture and the end game um and um i always found that really fascinating that psychology psychological side of of sport and i think um, I've always kind of thought like that. I always, you know, say I'm a big picture person. I hate detail. And it, you know, when launching it, I immediately went to that big picture, that end game, the, what I visualized very clearly, this brand that stood for, stood for something and it was all encompassing and it included all the online, it included all the offline and, you know, it had merchandise and it had dating and it had a social network and it just had, it was this entire kitten's world that stood for something. Um, you know, the same way Playboy <laughs> did for men, that kind of, you know, it became, it started parties and became a brand um, from publishing to products to everything. It kind of, um, in my head, that I was very at the beginning, 
this big picture of visualizing what I saw it was down the line um and I just stayed the course and I you know I, I always say that everything's a game of chess and I always focus on the checkmate and not knocking off the little pawns in the process it's always been my my thing that friends have started saying as well and gone it's you know when they start thinking of it just remember the checkmate it kind of stops you getting bogged down into you know fighting the little fights and the little details around you and you can if you get so involved in that you can really easily lose sight of mm. that checkmate mm. of mm. that big picture of that billion you know that unicorn business um so yeah it's just you know i, I just think a i think my mind has always really thought like this um and b it's one of those things that i do, really do think you have to train your brain <laughs> to think in certain ways and habit mm. and repetition and doing things over and over again um you can change your mindset you can kind of reprogram to think in a certain way right, um right. and i think um you know and now you see nlp and cbt you know all the different therapies doing exactly that yeah. you know, about reprogramming behavioral patterns and stuff so um i don't think you know it's you're set in the way you think i think you right. can change the way you think but i do i genuinely do think that i've just always thought this way right um, right since i was little there's always been a you know and if anyone says you can't do it i'm like watch me yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's sort of a bit of a sometimes i wish i wasn't so much like that because it can be really exhausting yeah no, <laughs> proving no, I, people wrong i, I can <laughs> so, imagine yeah. i can imagine you know um, I, I love that analogy you know the chessboard analogy it's a, the tunnel vision view which is you know um you have an end goal and, and the end goal is a checkmate you know not not the pawns not playing the little game in between you do what you need to do but it's always the end goal right you know yeah. I, I, I love that i love that um, and you said, you know, sometimes it is negative. Sometimes there are negatives towards that, you know, that that strict tunnel vision, um, that drive. What are some of those negatives you, you feel? Um, I think sometimes it? you can, you know, I I know I have had friends, you know, accuse me of sort of being obsessed or, you know, not not spending enough time on friendships. That, mm -hmm. And it's sort of, um, you know, I can, I, can, I can look back and I can go, well, you know, maybe I should have be more involved or on that friendship level but to me I am involved with friends to me like really good friends actually you can pick up on once a year sometimes you can you know that thing and actually loads of my really good friends and a lot have come through school see that and they they know I'm just literally going a thousand miles per hour but if they also know that if shit hits the fan <laughs> in their lives I will be one of the first people they will call and I will be around there in a flash and I will be helping them and I'm there so um you know there is that for others that kind of need those friends who are just there all the time in their face mm. 24 7 um I'm just not that right not that person right. <laughs> um and you do and you do sacrifice stuff you do mm. you know you you, you do set on the friends and family and you, because you just are so consumed and motivated mm. and on this kind of this mission Mm. that sometimes you can forget there are these people around you right, that right, need right. your attention <laughs> um yeah, yeah um and i've got way more balance now and i've got way more balance in the last six years you know we've got three kids um yeah you know I, I, so yeah. yeah i'm much more zen sure, <laughs> and sure. kind of aware i'm sure. much more aware of the of you know the needs of the people around me and that kind of stuff i think the first sort of five or so years of KK and you know so I was pretty much single or in and out of like yeah. short relationships and stuff I was sort of going all in pretty kind of focused do you think <laughs> do you think it's necessary what do you think that mindset is necessary in order for you to become a successful entrepreneur or in order for you to to have a 50 million pound worth company you I know think you do you know it is it is necessary and, and you know people could go oh you don't need to be like that and I to be honest I don't know one successful entrepreneur Mm. and like really the really successful ones who probably wouldn't say the same thing right. who wouldn't go well we have you sacrificed or you know for our friends and 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 time that could be spent on that kind of active on that, that sort of activities sure. um, um and chilling out and relaxing um and just hanging out with friends and stuff yeah. i don't know one person that hasn't sacrificed that at the expense of setting up a business it yeah, just is a successful one it is all consuming and i think mm. it it has to be on one level um i think you i think looking back i could have been i could have looked after me a lot more okay. um at the beginning and i say that to people that you know when you are setting up businesses you do have to put yourself first as well you have to remember 
um, <laughs> that you need looking after. Right. Um, and but I think you know the world is way more aware of that than it was 15 years ago. So, okay. You know, there's a lot more you know mindfulness and meditation sure. and sure. and that mental well-being is a huge part of people's lives now. Yeah, and, and I'm very aware of that. That was but that, they, was that wasn't around you know 15 years ago. That one, no one had a clue. Yeah, <laughs> on that level. So. No, 100. I think um, that 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 was going to be one of my core questions. You know, um, as you're as you're grinding, as you're on this mission, you know, what are the things that you need to keep in mind? you know, to, to keep yourself afloat or to keep the Zen or the balance, you know, whilst you're aiming, you know, to take over the world, what do you need to do to keep your, your, your sanity? You know what you need? Um, I, I say you need a, you need a rock, you need a, you know, something that sort of grounds you and that is there. And, you know, I've been very lucky, you know, met my husband eight years ago and, and actually it's funny because sort of business started, you know, was really flying, flew much more when I was with him. And I think a lot of that was, I've had this, sort of person he's very chilled Mm -hmm. sort of very homebody just you know not into flash or anything like that he's just sort of chilled and he kind of lets me do whatever i want (laughs) but he's there you know what i mean he's a sort of ground and and i think that that accountability i think you know when you go out on your own and if you're single and you're going out on your own and launch your business stuff there isn't that there there's nothing so you can just go and then you don't realize where that ground is so you can end up in weird lost. places you can get, you lost, get totally yeah. lost yeah. and you go down one direction and rabbit hole and and you become a different you can become a different person you become sure. a, without really realizing it sure, sure um so that to me is really important i've always i'm a real sports nut i've done i do so much sport and i love it and yeah it's always so i think sport has always been my thing and if i'm spiraling in my head then i'll just go out you know go out for a run or go for mm. a swim um or we live on the river so i go for long walks i walk okay. the whole time and like now in this lockdown um because yeah. i can feel my head spiraling and crawling yeah. walls i'm walking more than i've ever walked okay. so all my zoom calls are done whilst walking yeah on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no that's fair enough okay so the importance of being grounded and the importance of having a big picture and the importance of you know just just being tunnel vision and so focus on what, you, what you're trying to do but trying to keep a balance at the same time you know um you mentioned friends and you mentioned family as well you know, um, have your priorities changed from when you started till now, you know, in terms of, you know, what's most important in your life? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, um, you know, I joke that KK is my first baby um, and is one of my children. But, but obviously, at the end of the day, you know, my, my, my family is, is my priority. My kids sure. are, are my absolute priority and um, as in my real kids. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, but again, I think that that does help that has grounded me massively okay. and also it's made me focus more on the bigger picture because you don't have time when you're juggling three kids especially at the moment um you don't have time to focus on the little things or get involved sure. in the little battles you know, or the irritations that used to really you know send me off and stuff it's because i i'm very quick to go oh in the grand scheme of things does this really matter does this yeah. really matter and most of the stuff that stresses me out doesn't really matter okay. <laughs> when i when i question myself like that um so everything's kind of in units of time now you can't have three hour lunch meetings just talking yeah. bollocks um yeah. i have like a 20 minute meeting that gets exactly the same job done sure. um sure so then i've got to get back if there's school runs or nursery pickups and that kind of thing um yeah so you learn, yeah. you learn the efficiency of your trying I'm much to more organized now yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense i mean so in terms of how successful kk has been you know what do you think you know, the, the reason is, what, what are the core drivers that makes KK what it is today? I mean, obviously you, you're talking about your drive, you know, your, your focus, your, your, your resilience, you know, what else do you think has made KK blow up so much? I think it, we launched at a time when society was beginning to change and we were, we were the front, you know, one of the front runners in female sexuality and, um, and, so that's you know that's the thing we were sort of that front of the wave yeah. as it came crashing down um and we stood our ground we haven't sold out we haven't mm. made the ticket prices really expensive we kept the whole female thing at the core and it would be it would have been so easy to have lost that at the beginning for the sake of money yeah. um and what stopped, what stopped I, you 
if you don't mind me because asking. that wasn't what it was about and and i'm not a money person luckily okay. i've got an amazing business partner now and ceo who you know is good amazing with details and tech and the money side of things because it we now have a great you know between us we're a great team um but that to me this is about changing the world <laughs> when it comes to you know something i'm really passionate about and that sure. you know so that that whole money side doesn't if you start thinking money 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 i think you lose sight of why you're doing something in the first place um and if you look at a lot of big brands and the stories behind them they weren't launched they were launched to fix a problem or something missing in society that the founders were pissed off about and wanted to change they weren't launched to make millions of money millions of pounds um sure, sure. so they, so the the, the the growth the growth model for them was there's something missing here i have a fix for it and the yeah. growth came from actually b b bringing value to society yeah exactly and i say that to people launch, you know wanting to launch businesses you know one of the big questions you need to ask yourself what are you trying to fix what you know what what are you wanting to change in the world that's making you want to launch this business and especially if you're going after investment you know investors want to know what problem in society you're going to fix you're trying to fix with the business sure. you're launching sure. and there's a massive especially at the moment you know but people are very much it's eco or wellness and sustainability sustainability mm. um and that's you know a lot of investors now are looking for you know there's a there's a conscience yeah. <laughs> social conscience so in not just throwing money into a big financial pot obviously they yeah. want to make money but they also want the con their conscience wants to actually try and fix something in the world that needs fixing yeah um so conscious so, yeah. conscious capitalism i believe they call it nowadays mm. right um when we're talking about investors and stuff like that you know what gave you the courage to to come into an industry which was very male-led male orientated um and say you know, I can do this. Speaking from um, a woman talking to to younger woman or other women that want to get into where you are right now, you know, where do you get that courage and that 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 zeal from that says, "Look, this is me. I can do this." I think I'm I think part of it, as I said, I think there's part of it that's just been my personality. That's just who I am. That is that you know, wanting to piss people off. Um, and um, it so there's always, and I always say, you know, I didn't get the memo of being a girl. And coming into Man's World, it was like I saw something that wasn't right. I wanted to fix it. I wanted to launch something. And I didn't even, I was going so fast in my head. I did, you know, I've got ADHD. It goes 5,000 miles per hour, my head does. Um, it's exhausting being me. And it just, and I just saw it. And that, I, as soon as I went, right, this is what I'm doing, that was it. And so the whole the thought process of, oh my God, you're, you're a woman and this is a man's world and everything's about man sex and yeah. you're about to get so much <clears throat> shit and you're about, you know, that it didn't happen. By the right. time that was happening to me and yeah. my head had caught up you ready <laughs> with, you with this is it. happening. Um, it, 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 I was, I was well, well on. down the line yeah. and people were like, how do you deal with the abuse? And I'm like, well, I haven't really noticed it and now I'm right. noticing it, but we're kind of two years down the line and we're, you know, it's flying and yeah. So, I mean, so what I've taken from that is with the question of how do you deal with the abuse and how do you deal with the, you know, the very male oriented or patriarchal misogynistic, you know, um, climate that you've been working in. It's like, I don't even take note. I'm just so no. focused on what I'm doing on my purpose. I call, I call it, I call it my invisible force field. <laughs> it's just sort of there and it kind of gets battered off. And, yeah. um, and I care, you know, if I care what close friends and family think and if, you know, if you know one of them has a problem or tells me something then you know i'll listen to it normally i'll ignore it um but <laughs> i will take it i will take it on board um but then with that as well i think you know you've also got and i'm aware of it you've mm. also got that thing with you know close friends and family that they sometimes a lot of them criticizing is because they're used to you in a certain way in a certain position in a certain world so you changing and becoming a bigger entity and changing as a person they a lot of the time they don't like it they don't so often because i say to people yeah. actually sometimes the biggest criticism you'll get yeah, is from, from those family. closest to you right because they know you, who you they know who them. you are they're comfortable with that's who you them. used to that's, be right exactly that's their insecurities that's mm. them feeling threatened by change and you just got to sort of realize in your head when you realize that you can then very quickly realize whether actually it's a genuine criticism or whether it's just coming from a place in them Right, right. That's interesting. I mean, and so how, 
how did you deal with that then? I guess, you know, coming from your parents' side or your sibling side, you know, and th them looking at you like, you know, what you're doing is crazy, you know? Um... I think I, I knew that it was more than worrying about me. It was worrying, it was them worrying about me getting shit. Right. Okay. Um, and that's, that's it. And so that, um, they didn't think it was wrong. No mm. one, no, none of my family's ever, well, apart from my dad, he smashed yeah. a computer, but that just drove me even more further to do it. Right. Um, so your dad smashed and, the computer um, and I just, instead of throwing you off, that made you go deeper? Yeah, exactly. Deeper okay. down the rabbit hole. Um, and but anyone else, I knew it was coming from a place of love and just sort of worrying about getting abuse rather than them going, oh, that's wrong. Sure. You know, sure. you shouldn't be doing it. So, yeah. um, and I knew I was fine and, you know, they know I'm really thick skinned. Yeah. Um, and we'll just take it, take whatever. Yeah. Um, but then that's because I know I'm, you know, it's not about me. It's a yeah. much bigger purpose. And sure. I think I said before, it's, I've always thought that I'm just this, you know, I'm just the pawn. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Um, You're just an entity being used for, to yeah. deliver, to deliver something, you know, for the wider, exactly. wider goal of life and humanity. You know, I do feel that way a lot as well, um, considering what I do as well. And <clears throat> from what you've said, the idea of your families and friends and stuff, being restrictive you know there is an element of concern there's also an element of fear for themselves because they, they're accustomed to who they know and they're feeling that they're losing this person or this person that they've always known mm -hmm. is becoming something else and any growth is scary from your end from their end you know it's it's, it's, it's a scary thing so in terms of you know be you being a female entrepreneur in um 2021 i know you didn't even notice it as it happened you just boom you're here you know, um, what what are the current challenges or what challenges were you facing once you realized that once you're actually in those big rooms and those big offices with those big names and those big numbers, you know, flying left, and left, right and center. Once you had to notice the knights, the bishops, the rooks, the pawns <laughs> on the board, you know, what were the challenges that you started facing? Um, the challenges we started facing and that's when I got Hadley, our, you know, CEO on board I think three years ago is I could see that the online side with have you know more revenue than the offline and I'm a very offline person and our team was very offline um and I think that's when you realize that you can't do what you want to do because that's not your skill set um that can be quite scary because you're suddenly going I can't do it all um and you're admitting that it's not being bad at stuff it's just you just it's just not in your skill set plus you don't want to do it you know I don't want to do most of what's involved sure. with KK now because I'm not really interested in I'm not really a big digital tech person sure, I sure, like the, the bigger picture side. and what it looks like and what yeah. we're trying to deliver yeah. but the you know the nitty-gritty sure. um or accounts and stuff yeah. um all of that so it I think that's always a challenge people is is going when you want to grow you've got to let go you've okay. got to let go you've got to get people better than you in and he specializes in different things and you've got to you're giving up a baby it's like taking a baby to nursery or to school you're letting other people that's it life changes yeah. forever yeah. you know what i mean they will never how, how be in your 100 percent care anymore yeah you know so how difficult is that because you know you you have this baby which you've raised yourself kind of thing being your business kk um but then you realize you are lacking somewhere you know um how important is that to get someone else that it's really important you won't you grow you do not grow until you take on other people and right. people that are better than you um and the minute it's funny because the minute you get past that again it's that comfort zone that fear bubble and uh -huh, yeah. get out of it um it's really liberating like to me now yeah. it's so liberating <clears throat> not really having a clue how most of my business is operating okay <laughs> or what anyone is doing most of the time it's really liberating right you just um, to run and i trust that thing i trust them all i trust Hads and our community manager and our events directors and you know what I mean I trust some of them. Yeah. You know the the part you know the person who they've been here the least they've still been here nearly four years. Yeah. Um, involved in the team. Some of them have been here fourteen years. One of them. So it's you know they I'm you know they they're like family and I sure. trust them. I massively trust them with yeah. my baby. Yeah. Um, no, um, which is great because it frees me up to you know to get out there and do other stuff and and focus on the big picture. Yeah. I mean, have you have you faced any challenges from the male side um, as, as specifically to you as being a woman coming into this into the space? Oh, because, always. Always. Yeah. Still yeah. now daily. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, still, and comments and I always get, you know, the smart asses on Twitter or LinkedIn and you just go, they just, you know, what I mean, it's just I make I make people feel threatened. I make a lot of men feel threatened. And that's just, you know, that's business front, but also 
you know personally and doing what I do and I've noticed that I notice that in my day-to-day life out and about or people's husbands what, what, stuff, what, what is the what are feel... the what are the kind of comments or threats um I mean what are the kind of comments or things that you know make them feel threatened what is it um it's and then... just it's just it's a general threat that I'm going to steal their wives and partners and and steal business but, as well. but this is that you know this comes from their own insecurities it's it's right. you know that's there. anyone that feels threatened that's not on me yeah that's nothing that's, to do that's with them. me that's that's what's going on in in them and and i've realized that and so actually i'm very quick to just feel sorry for people right right, <laughs> so, right um, you, you realize something's lacking on there and yeah so i don't fight i don't get involved i just instantly think oh you know never mind but on a <laughs> on a business level you know when you're talking to you know um the, the big spenders etc um the funders etc and you 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 know are the challenges on their end? Because, you know, you said it's business. It's on their but... end. Exactly. Again, it's on their end and you can't, yeah. I'm not going to waste energy um, fighting people or trying to change people's minds because it's sex and it's so personal. So um, is, it, is, it just, that... is it just personal? Uh, the, 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 the challenges from the business end, is it just the personal thing? Are they more threatened? That it should... is. Or is it is more the, thing? Is on, on financial? Paper, as, yeah. On paper, as a business, if you look at the commercials, if you look at the growth yeah. as a business, it's a very, you know, it's a great business to invest in. It's a great model, it's, yeah. All the boxes are ticked, sure. everything. Sure. Um, on that level. So, and I know that. Right. Um, and you've got the long de- longevity of it. It's 15 yeah. years. It's got, you know, it's such a s- secure brand. Yeah, um, sure. And so I know that. So when you get, investors sort of you know oh we're interested and then it's like oh well you know they start faffing around you know that they've just it's going to be a no and you know that it's personal and that they just haven't got their heads around investing in sex and mm. a lot of the time it's women's sex and um, and also to be honest there's still a massive issue when it comes to female founders i could be running any kind of business a furniture company and mm. you know it's something like there's not even it's not even 10 p per pound of mm. money invested goes to female funded co- founded companies despite the fact female founded companies perform better on paper right. the male founded businesses right. that's a fact the stats are there yeah. but you will you get that internal you know misogynism and in a lot of investors mm. a lot of time they don't realize they're doing it that conscious bias that they mm. will not they see a woman and think that's basically putting money down the toilet the lack if faith. we invest in that it's faith. just the mind their mindset yeah. okay interesting um, and you how can't you, change it you can't so how change do you, that so what do you do about that i mean you can't change it do you just say fine on to the next one oh, we then? just say fine next i'm okay. not going to waste energy on because it's you can't that's too much energy and time trying to change someone's mind that you sure. know it's so ingrained in them they're sure. never going to change these 40 50 60 year old men the stale pale male <laughs> investors i call them are never going to change their mindset sure okay interesting. you know the younger ones you, you can and i think yeah. you know you starting at grassroots and kids and stuff you will hopefully you, you change it but you're not going to change the 40 plus ones sure you know, so you so just, I, guess, I guess i guess the tip from that then is is you know um go where you actually want and where you actually valued right and stop fighting the people that don't actually want you because it seems That's like the, the thing don't yeah. waste the time fighting what you can't change right you know you're never going to change that yeah, interesting. Um, and then you mentioned, you know, the the the, the younger investors, the younger businesses, etc., having having more faith in 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 this kind of in this kind of world, in this kind of sector. I mean, generally, for from a female entrepreneur perspective, um, what what advice would you give for young ladies trying to start something up? You know, I would. I mean, the advice I get is get is get mentors, get into. Mentors get into communities and network with other women and women that have done it and been there and done it and not necessarily the exact industry you're wanting to do, but get, you know, I had it in my twenties. I went to so many networking events and I was, you know, this little sort of 21, 22, 23 year old. So out of my depth. And most of the time it was all men and they were in their fifties and sixties. And I just sort of blagged my way into a lot of these events. And I learned off their energy. I learned off the ones who've been successful you just pick up the tips of where they the way they behave and what's important to them. Mm. And they are all big, these big picture people, mm. um, no matter what the industry and they, you know, the energy around them and it. Um, so to me, it's, you know, if you're going to launch business, whether you're male or female, get out there, you know, yeah. and network and specifically women, because actually men have a lot more access to sort of the boys clubs yeah. <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, sure. And 
Um, and that's, you know, that's partly why we launched Sister, the other business right. two years ago, which is a professional, you know, network, a yeah. network for professional women and yeah. mentoring a big part of that. And it's a big part of, of what we did, you know, and do it's women across all ages and in every industry doesn't matter. So, you know, I was kind of just a bit bored of a lot of female networking events that were specific yeah. to industries. Sure. Um, and just felt that actually as women, we naturally collaborate and we naturally network and it's how you know as animals as female animals it's what we do yeah um yeah. just in big groups and big communities so mm. um that's okay. the whole community side is has always been the massive part of kk and it's a massive part of sister and and that would be my advice of just of get it of especially now when you were stuck and it's all about digital get messaging sure. everyone on linkedin mm. you know people that you admire because they're stuck at home doing nothing yeah. while well, they're working from home, but they've yeah. got more time on their hands. These big it's CEOs access. aren't you know, on aeroplanes jetting off around the world the whole time. True. Like they usually are. So True. a lot of them will spare 10, 15 minutes to have a, I've chatted to loads of people since yeah. last March lockdown that have messaged me out in the blue on LinkedIn and said, yeah. can I pick your brain for, for half an hour? Yeah. And I'm like, of course you can. Cause yeah. it, you know, I'm bored. I need humans. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, just get, just get networking so def definitely get some mentors on board. mentors mentors network that's that's really mm -hmm. big i mean so what are some strategies you said you used to get into those um those spaces with the big boys and stuff like that and you used to be able to navigate your, your way through it what are some strategies uh that would potentially help women get into more prominent positions then you know Do you know what, it, i think now what i think where people got it wrong was trying to be like a man in a man's world um right. and i've always said that to me the most powerful person in the city i remember saying it when i was like working in the city before i launched kk doing pr that the most powerful person in the city was a woman that knew not how to intelligent woman that knew how to use her femininity mm. to get what she wanted <laughs> in the mm. workplace and, what um, does that actually mean using and your femininity and the, but femininity is like our natural a lot of our natural female traits mm. from empathy you know just yeah, empathy is a massive one mm. um and to use it and that vulnerability and to often men's backs will go up and mm. women's, you know, the more testosterone driven sure. uh, power happy women, um, yeah. their, their backs will go up if they feel threatened. Yes. So to, I remember mom telling me when I was little, if I want, wanted something from dad, I had to find a way of making it be his idea. Okay. So it sort of was always something that kind of we, yeah. And I think, and I think I've always done it and then it kind of, you Inception. know, learning a chick. And I think a lot of that is you take the ego out of it. Mm. Does it really matter a lot of the time if it's like, well, I had that idea and I, as long as it gets done. Right. So even now I find myself, you know, kind of playing a bit of right. Not, not wanting to get guys, you know, men's backups, giving them a sense of sort of control. Sure. And then sort of positioning, and you're as long as it gets done. Yeah. But you're doing it in a way that isn't, they're not feeling threatened. They think sure. they're in control, and they'll come out the end thinking that they did it. So using your All femininity, right, you know that that's a really interesting, interesting um, perspective and approach because I feel like you know there's a conception, it might be a misconception, that a lot of women that are in these big businesses, successful businesses like yourself, are very you know, testosterone driven, you know, they, 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 they lack empathy, you know, they just like, boom, 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 crush, 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 crush. But you said a complete flip, which is like, use your, your softness, your femininity, use your em empathy. And, and that could be a benefit as opposed to a deterrent. Yeah. And just, and it, you can communicate mm. and be strong, mm. but be, you know, unthreatening at the same time. I think sure. it's that, you know, and I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm, you know, I can be fully aggressive and assertive and a right pain in the ass. Um, and I think empathy and being aware of it is something that, again, it's something that I have become more aware of and I've sure. become better at. Um, that's for sure. So, okay. um, but it's something that a lot of women have naturally. And actually it can be a weakness because it's sort of, they get, a, you can get so bogged down with emotion and taking things personally that you forget it's just work. It's just okay. business. So, um, um, yeah. Yeah. I think use it. I think it's the it's being aware, isn't it? Yeah. As long awareness. as you're aware of it or your weaknesses, your strengths and um so, so in terms of you know leadership qualities, you know, um I know you've mentioned some already, you know, awareness, you know, drive and empathy. You know, what other leadership qualities do you think are necessary to 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 climb up this ladder, this you know, the corporate ladder or you know, mm. the success ladder? I think I think that you can't it's the part you've got to remove the personal. 
you've got okay. to you've got to have a thick skin you can't you know you really can't worry and spend time bogged down and trying to please everyone okay. you're not going to please everyone sure um it's you know it's like leaders in the world and you know a lot of the time the ones with the egos and wanting to be mr popular yeah um are, are just shit yeah. <laughs> um, and um shout out to tron so it kind of yeah and well this country at the moment right? um, yes. it's just trying to be mr popular and right. you can't do that like that's the thing as a leader you can't um you can you drive i would say it's a bit like you know a wolf it's a wolf pack you know you're very mm. much you, you're out in front going a thousand miles per hour and then you come back and you circle the pack to make sure everyone's all right everyone's and then you go good, back out yeah. a thousand miles per hour and, and you're very much on your own like, I'm very much an own wolf I'm surrounded yeah. by thousands of people the whole time and everything I do and I've got lots of friends but as a person yeah. internally I am on my own mm. and I am a I am that lone wolf and um it yeah that that that's very but that's how there's loads of different leadership styles but that kind of is how I've always been I'm not a good manager I'm really yeah. not I'm not good with the detail. I'm not. And this is why you got know, someone else to come in to, to handle that part. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I'm not, that's the thing. I'm not good at that. And I'm not um, good at checking in and finding out what everyone's doing and all the details and stuff. Cause it's just, that's not just me. I'm, I'm, you know, charging out the front, <laughs> but I you, will circle back and make sure everyone's all right. Sure. And then I'll go back out again. <laughs> it's sort of, um, that's just, that's, that's my style. You, you work to your strengths, which is, which is really important. So in terms of, you know, what you've learned so far is what is something you would have told your younger self today? Like, you know, what are some things that if you had a chance to tell yourself growing up or your chance to tell yourself coming into business to become um, KK Emma, you know, what, um, what, what would you I, have gone do back know, to I think it's more personal. I think on a business front, I was, I was, my mindset was, you know, I didn't give a shit what anyone thought. So um, that wasn't something I had to develop. It's just always been there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's I think it's more part of a personal thing. I'll be, I'll be kinder to myself. Sure. That, you know, I wasn't kind to myself at, at all. You know, I'd eating issues and just issues mm. mentally. Mm. So insecure about so much stuff and mm. beat myself up the whole time about everything. Um, I was super critical of mm. myself i was at school um and so that that would be my big thing you've got to yeah. you know just be kind to yourself and look after be more selfish when it comes yeah. to you and what makes you tick it's, it's very much something that i i yeah spent years getting yeah. yeah getting to and i always i always say now that you know that i feel you know if you ask who your hero is when you're 21 um i would have liked to think you know my 40 year old self <laughs> is, is my hero so um yeah and get there okay fine um in terms of your mantra you you know do you have one what what, what you know do you know and it has been since i was little and it used to send my dad like fucking crazy as shit happens mm. i'd do something when i was little and he'd get so mad and i'd just stand there apparently and go shit happens dad and now, <laughs> and now my six-year-old son has, has learned the same expression no. so he'll see he'll drop something i'll go shit happens mom and yeah. i just can't, i just laugh i'm like it does Raph. it really does <laughs> yeah 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 you control what you can control whatever you can't exactly. control just, just exactly just let it be it just happens <laughs> so in, in in that sense you know we're talking about shit happens um when shit does happen how do you adapt so for instance right now we're in the middle of covid you know and um we spoke briefly earlier about you know actually in a bit of depth about what your your future plans are um with the online platforms and stuff you know so when shit does happen in business how the hell do you get yourself out of it? You have, again, I have this, I always have it sort of, I go really, when it happened last March, I went really calm. It okay. actually, when the world is crazy, I think, cause I am crazy. I don't right. like calm. And okay. you know, when the world is at peace and it's all going swimmingly, that's a really uncomfortable right. situation to be in right, for me. Right. So like when it did go crazy, yeah, when it did go crazy, everything goes quiet in my head and that calm and right. it, you realize, you know very quick to realize and had my business partner he's exactly the same mm. um so together we were like right <laughs> and mm. this is it you know it it just sort of focused and again you realize what you can control and what you can't control right. and you pivot and you adapt and you don't stress it there is no point stressing it and going well that we're losing that we're losing you know we've lost so much revenue yeah if, if, I, if I even think about it it just gives me i think that that, um, that that would have been the question I don't think about you know? it. yeah so that would have been the question for me you know like yeah, because your your business was so, you know, contact focused, right? You know, as mentioned before, it's all about the, the the connection in real life. That's completely removed at this point in time, you know? So, 
you, you know, and obviously in terms of revenue, your love has, you know, gone down the drain and you're, you're, you're bleeding out, you know, how do you just, what, how do you get back up? Cause again, that bit I can't control. Mm. So yeah, I'm very, so really quick in my brain to just shut down that part of no control. Right. And that's that there is no point stressing about that as much as it pains me. Yeah. Um, and what can I control? And that's in this time at the moment, you know, there's a not a lot we can control. Yeah. And that is making me call walls. And, and it d- is stressing me out because so much of it I can't control. And I'm used right. to being able to control my life. Um, yeah. Yeah. But by focusing on what you can control, they can really sort of, you know, again, tunnel vision yeah, into, right. right, forget the white noise of all the crazy. Yeah. What can I control and what am I going to do about it? And just okay. the baby steps and... Um, you know, and I, I wrote a diary from the age of eight to 21, like whole pages. Um, and I've gone back this year writing a whole page a day and mm. that's making me feel better. Mm. <laughs> it's sort of mm. that. Yeah. What does that, what does that do for you? The whole right on uh, writing the diary. It's kind of, it's a bit of a release. People always, you know, yeah. speak about writing journals and stuff. And I did it so much when I was little. Yeah. Um, and I've always in my head thought, right, I need to get back to writing diary. I need to get back to it. And I just haven't done it. Yeah. And now this year I've done it. Yeah. Um, and it's just sort of, I rant. And it's okay. all out <laughs> yeah. and it's done. It's in the diary. It's not my head anymore. Okay. Um, so I think that, yeah, that helps. You just have to, yeah, you can't do much at the moment. And you get out there and I walk the whole time and um, and I just can do what I can do. Sure, um, sure. And control that. <laughs> do you do you look at other business models um, as you guys are growing? And um, are, are there business, business models that you've looked at and you're like, yeah, I like how these guys are working or how these guys are performing? You know, we've got, there's so many elements to our business from mm-hmm. education to the online education side to the online dating side, the social mm-hmm. network. You know, we incorporate ticketing, Eventbrite type thing. We incorporate mm-hmm. so many bits that you can look, you can look at, you know, we've done a big study on the likes of Bumble and Tinder and all the dating sites to see how they operate and how mm-hmm. their growth happened and so we can look at all of them and then we bring it into our big our whole big world um so um yeah so we're not we there isn't a business out there anything like ours yeah um but there's lots of businesses that make up certain aspects of ours right 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 Um, right right. so you kind of you kind of take bits and pieces from everything because yours is so far reaching in terms of the avenues that's gone that's gone into that you kind of have to right Mm. makes sense yeah what things keep you going in your personal life what makes you happy you know um do you know my kids they're little they're two four and six and anyone with little kids no that age is just hilarious and they just you know i mean you can be stressing about something and then one of them will come running in from nursing stuff and you just realize what's important Mm. um and everything just goes away so that outside running just fresh air yeah every day um um and i love cooking okay you know if i'm really stressed, therapeutic I just, um i find it i find cooking really therapeutic so yeah. i just you know you work out what chills you out yeah. um and i do loads of pilates i love it that's my kind of active rest my brain right. is never going to rest in meditation and stuff sure. there is no way this brain There's gets too much off. that adhd um, yeah. but that active rest of the phone's down you're just actively you're still doing something, something but you're zoned in on one thing yeah okay perfect um so yeah so those are kind of my things I appreciate that. Emma, thanks a lot for your time. You know, this business stuff has been very, very helpful, you know, from the bedroom to the boardroom, literally, (laughs) you know, I'm sure this will help a lot of ladies out there. I can't wait to to, to release this stuff, you know. Um, Thank you for having me. No, no, (laughs) anytime. Enjoy the rest of your day and thanks again for your time. And we'll catch up soon. All right. Have a good one. Get some Pilates in, get some some gym (laughs) in. I will. Okay. Catch up (laughs) soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Another episode of No Silicon Podcast with Killing Kittens, Emma Sale. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. You know, very insightful. From the mind of a millionaire. Gotta love it, man. From the bedroom to the boardroom. No silicone. Keeping it raw and keeping it real. It's your boy Hendrix signing out. Peace. What's it called? No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Keeping it raw and keeping it real, real, real.